So this video will be a discussion of problem number two from the 2024 AP Calc AB free response set. This is the second of the calculator questions from 2024, and it's a pretty common theme to see in position two within a free response set. So this version of number two says a particle moves along the x-axis, so its velocity for times that are positive is given by this function. Part A says there's one time t sub r on the interval 0 to 2 when the particle is at rest or not moving, find t sub r. For the interval 0 to t sub r, is the particle moving to the left or to the right? Give a reason for your answer. I did not do that part of the question. I'll be back in 30 seconds. So that was probably a fast 30 seconds. First part of this. When is the particle at rest? It's at rest when the velocity is equal to zero. It's not moving to the right. It's not moving to the left. It is technically at rest when velocity is zero. Where does that happen? Calculator's in place. You could break out the calculator, graph V of T. I shrunk my horizontal axis to just show the range from zero to two. Uh, I think my Y axis settings go from negative two to positive two. This velocity graph is equal to zero at approximately 1.426. That's when the particle is at rest. The part that I had initially forgotten to answer was this. So on the interval 0 to t sub r, so on this stretch of time, is the particle moving to the left or to the right? When velocity is positive, our x-coordinate will be increasing. And if our x-coordinate is increasing, our particle is moving to the Right. Part B asks us to find the acceleration at time 1.5. Show the setup for your calculation. Is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at time 1.5? Explain your reasoning. So you don't need to take this derivative by hand and then evaluate it at 1.5. Hopefully you recognize that the rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So we need the derivative of this velocity function at time 1.5. That's going to be a numerical value, and you can use the numerical derivative option from your calculator. I have my TI-83 input right here. Uh, you can use your numerical derivative option on the calculator to find that the value of the derivative of velocity at 1.5 is approximately negative 1. Is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at this time? When velocity and acceleration are working together, as they are in this case, Back in part A, this point is at 1.4. 1.5 is obviously a little bit to the right. So velocity is negative at 1.5. Acceleration is also negative, as indicated by this calculation that we just did. When velocity and acceleration have the same sign, when they work together, speed is going to be increasing. And that is the case here. Velocity is more negative, and it's getting more negative due to the negative acceleration. Part C says that the position of the particle at time 1 is negative 3. Find the position of the particle at time 4. Show the setup for your calculations. So I know the position at time 1 is negative 3. I want to know the position at time 4. To find this, I'm going to take the time that I, I'm going to take the position that I know at time 1, and I'm going to add on how much the position changes by from the time that I know it to the time that I want it by integrating that rate of change of velocity, of position, excuse me. So I'm integrating the rate of change of position to find the total change in position from time one to time four. The rate of change of position is velocity. Calculator's in place. You can use your numerical integral option on the calculator to determine that that is going to give you approximately negative 2.803 as the position at time four. Last part of this asks us to find the total distance traveled by the particle on the interval 1 to 4. Show the setup for your calculation. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. If we take the absolute value of velocity, what that does to this graph back in part A, this portion that's below the x-axis is going to get reflected up above the x-axis looking something like this. 
we only want to accumulate distance traveled when we're trying to do a total distance calculation. So if we do the integral of speed or the absolute value of velocity, or any of those velocities that were really negative get reflected up to positive velocities, that will give us our total distance. Here's the setup for the calculation. Calculations carried out on the calculator and we end up with a result of approximately 0.958.